Welcome to Bad Food Blog, and I'm going to be doing a very simple breakfast this morning. Just a simple fried egg on toast. So I'm going to make myself four slices of toast. I'm only going to use two slices of this bread, and I messed up cutting that slice pretty badly actually. Because I'm going to cut this in half because this bread doesn't fit in the toaster because it's way too large. I have really, really messed up cutting that bread. Look how bad that is. Well, this is Bad Food Blog. What did you expect? Right. Let's get this over there in the toaster. <laughs> See, if I left them at their full length, half of them would be out of the toaster, and it doesn't work very well like that. There we go. Uh, it's plugged in. There, and uh, they will probably burn. All right, now to the fried egg. And here we go with the fried egg. What I want to do so I'm trying to get this little tripod set up on the side here. There we are. What I'm going to show you is I'm going to use such a minuscule amount of oil. Absolutely tiny. There you go. Three or four drops. That's literally it. That's literally all I'm going to use. I'm going to have to turn the light on because... Ah, there we go. Now you can actually see it. Three or four drops. Um, do you want a fried egg? Sorry, cat's gone out for the first time. It's uh, now the recommended time. My wife stood in the window watching her. I don't think there's much point watching a cat. But before we put the two eggs in, we've got to get the frying pan up to temperature. And my trick to doing them sort of low fat fried eggs is that they're almost poached, is simply that not only am I gonna make them nice and warm, make the pan nice and warm, but I'm going to use a lid to steam them. So they would be sort of sealed that way, rather than turning them over or having enough fat to splash over them, or any of the other things you can do to keep them uh, moist. So pan's gonna take a couple of minutes to get up to temperature. Shouldn't be too long actually, look at how much that's glowing. Trouble with these cast iron pans, the outside of the pan can be cold, and as you can see there, the surface tension has loosened already on the oil because it's very, very warm in the middle there. So, and it's doing its job. Now this type of pan, you really only rinse it and very lightly wash it. You don't scrub it. The idea is not to get all of the lacquer off because this lacquer here is burnt on oil. And with this kind of skillet, you kind of, you season them, which is to purposely burn on oil once a year. Or if you, someone puts it in the dishwasher, you have to do it straight afterwards. So the idea is that this surface is non-stick, but it's not non-stick in the same way as Teflon. It's non-stick in the way that it's probably got layers and layers and layers of burnt on oil. Oh, let's have a look at the toast quickly. How are we looking here? Yeah, a little anemic still, but I like nice dried out toast for fried eggs, so we're gonna leave that for a couple of minutes. There we go. So, there's the oil making its way around the pan. And it'll reach a point where it will just go oof, and completely fill the pan. And I know this sounds crazy, but the pan gets hot enough, the oil reaches sort of a point where it loses all surface tension. It just seems to flow across the pan. I think we're just about reaching that now. Where it starts to, you can see that it's, bubble, it's bubbling a little bit. And the last tiny, tiny parts of uh, water are coming out of the oil. There's a little bit of smoke coming up from the pan. This is a bit where I'm going to turn it down to the temperature I'm going to cook the eggs at, which on this cooker is four. And I've no idea what that means. These electric hop style cookers, there is, I don't think there's any way of, like, I don't think it might be a thermostat and it might represent some sort of indication of like 60 degrees per notch or something. I have no idea. Whatever it uses, I've never figured it out. So the oil's pretty much spread all around the pan now and it's getting its way around. So, time for the eggs to go. See, the pan's hot enough. You do not want to put the eggs in while the pan's not at that searing bit. Because one of the things that's also helping the eggs to not stick is that little crusty layer of cooked egg that picks in the middle. And immediately, the lid's gonna go on. Because these are gonna both poach the steam and they are going to cook all at the same time. And I've used the one with a little window here so you can see what's going on. And you know, this is a healthy fried egg, really. 
there's not much else going on with this and it's very simple very easy I do see a lot of people try to flip eggs over and I just think well just for the want of a lid on a pan I and mean, I don't have to use the one with glass on I could use you know I've got, got metal ones here they work just as well you just can't see what's going on and this gives you the advantage of being able to do the wobble test and see if the egg whites wobble because that's what I do I just move it a little bit and if the egg whites still wobbling it isn't cooked now this isn't a problem at the moment because I know it's not cooked but eventually the temperature of the glass at the top here will equal the temperature of the boiling water. And this is just the water coming off the egg, which has been evaporated. It's going round and round. And as, as the egg cooks, as the protein cooks, it pushes water out. This water is going to hit the searing hot part of the pan. That's going to convex inside the, uh, inside the uh, frying pan here with the lid on. And that will then condense on the cold part of the egg on the top and transfer the heat to it, cooking it. So we essentially, we're poaching and frying the egg at the same time. But it does work very well. And this is what you want to do if you want a perfect fried egg. As you can see now, the steam's building up more and more and more and more. As more of the egg gets cooked, there's more water released. And as you know, there's no, there was no other water in the pan other than the two eggs. Tiny bit of oil, no other water. Okay, we're reaching a point now where I'm starting to see the yolk change color. Now, this might not be as clear to you. Let's just bring the camera up here so you can see. So you can see the yolk is starting to go lighter. Now, it's going to get lighter and lighter as it cooks, but starting to get lighter, that means to me that the yolk is starting to pick up some heat and is starting to cook. And all the steam that's on this glass here, it's not just here. As the, there's like a, a thermal layer that goes down and air, as, as the steam comes up, it'll fill up, go down, and everything that's colder than 100 degrees centigrade, the steam will condense on. There we go, see, lighter and lighter. Mm. Now, I'm gonna pop the toast a second time. It's all about timing. I really enjoy fried eggs. And now we see, start to see, look, there's little bits of white appearing on top. So, I mean, do I want to pull the top off? I can pull the top off at this point. There we go. We're getting there. Now let's give it a shake and see if the egg whites are cooked. Yeah, it's a little wobbly on some of the egg whites. They're not quite cooked yet. So the lid goes back on. Let it steam a little longer. But you can see that when the white came over the eggs, the top of the eggs is getting cooked. The outside is cooked. The inside's not quite there yet. But what I do want to do is I want to keep the yolks running. So I don't want to steam this too long. And letting out some of the water vapor there and the steam, it's going to help regulate the temperature a little bit. Now, while I'm at this stage of the cooking, I think I'm just about the point. Let's just check that again. Yeah, the whites are cooked, the yolks are cooked, the heat goes off, I'm just going to keep the egg there warm. As you can see, that's ready. It's a blisteringly short time. The toast is ready. And you see I've left the lid off. The bottom of the egg is still going to continue cooking a little bit. The top of the egg is not. But I do like my yolks to have a bit of a base on them. I mean, this is essentially the kind of poaching and frying technique. I'm not frying the egg completely. I'm not dousing it in oil. I've not covered it completely. But <clears throat> I may have overcooked it slightly. Maybe the temperature's a tiny bit higher than it should have been. But one thing I don't have is the correct... I don't have the... <laughs> I don't have the correct thing to take it out. Oh no! I have messed up and used them all. Wow. Uh, do I not have a spatula here at all? Oh, I've got that. This is this multi-use tool that came with the... Uh... Yeah, and as you can see, I have two fried eggs, and as you can see, I've overcooked them. 
is messing around trying to find a spatula. I have burnt them to the bottom of the pan. But you know what? That's okay. A little bit more fat and I could have resolved that. But as you can see, I got a bit of a mess there. See, I messed that up. Too hot. But that's not a problem. Put some water in there, put that back on the pan. All of that egg will lift itself off and be fixed in no time. There's my two fried eggs. Perfectly done. I'm perfectly happy with those. I'm gonna sit down, put some salt and pepper on them and eat them with a nice cup of coffee. Thanks for watching. This has been Bad Food Blog. And uh, this has been uh, Low Fat Fried Eggs and uh, good morning. And please like and subscribe to the channel if you really, really want to help the channel out. The like button is the way to go. Thanks very much. Bye.